every Call of Duty Treyarch Zombies perk ranked from worst to best. My only rules are World of War through Cold War and OG perks only. No remasters will be getting extra credit. We are judging them based on their true, authentic, original form. It's just a million times simpler that way. So I suppose you can take a couple of these with a grain of salt, especially from Cold War. Also, no secret sauce because it's completely random. At the very bottom, number 26, we have Die Rises. Who's who? Who is who? Really. So right off the bat, these life preserver perks are a bit redundant in nature because they take up a slot from what could be a perk that could prevent you from dying in the first place. Replace it with virtually any perk above it and you will have a much better chance at living to begin with. But okay, let's assume you're not very good at the game, you're a beginner and you want the get out of jail free card. Unlike a quick revive, for example, that instantly and reliably picks you up, who's who forces you to revive yourself with nothing but the start Starting pistol. 90 plus percent of the time, you don't stand a f chance. Especially on a vertical map like Die Rise. I mean, what were they thinking? There is literally not a worse map for this perk to have been on. You know what would have been great? PhD to negate the fall damage. But they teased it, which is just one of the many, many reasons Die Rise is awful. But that's a different conversation for a different day. I understand that on Die Rise in particular, you can get every perk. So why not get who's who? But it certainly doesn't give it a pass. It certainly doesn't make it a well-designed perk. I would argue that this and the one above it are the only two perks in Zombies history that actively hurt the player. Which is a beautiful segue into number 25, BO2's Tombstone. Everything I said about who's who directly applies to Tombstone, except it is a little less impossible. You buy it, take a perk slot from what could have been an otherwise genuinely useful perk to prevent you from dying in the first place, and then you die. In this case, however, instead of subjecting you to the near impossible task of reviving yourself with nothing but a starting pistol, you can skip right to the chase and off yourself, leaving your teammates with the rest of the work. And if they get overwhelmed and die, the game is anticlimactically over. Once they're done carrying your sorry ass, you grab your tombstone and thus whatever else you had from your prior life. The silver lining, I suppose, is that like who's who, you can have this with every other perk so you may as well grab it, but it is still a bad perk. All right, now we're gonna talk about some perks that, while aren't actively detrimental, are definitely still not worth the perk slot. Number 24 goes to BO4's Death Perception, a perk that allows you to see zombies through the wall. Not only is this not useful in any way, shape, or form, I personally actually find it kind of annoying. There's just too much going on the screen at once. There's already way too much going on visually in BO4. Every zombie being brightly illuminated doesn't help. It is important to remember that BO4 perks have modifier abilities. It's activated in the fourth slot if you have every other slot filled as well. Some are better than others. The shape of your list can depend entirely on which perk you slide in your modifier. And frankly, the entire BO4 perk system is very preference and playstyle oriented, of course, in an effort to ditch the prior crotch perks quote unquote. So we are dealing with a lot of variables. Ultimately, it boils down to how you in particular play. But even with that said, I don't find death perception helpful for any particular play style. The modifier doesn't move the needle much either. It applies bonus damage to special enemy weak points. I mean, come on. And yes, I am aware that death perception was remastered and is significantly better in Cold War. I'll say it again. We're only regarding the OG versions. It's more fair and more simple. Number 23, BO4's Blaze Phase. What a useless f perk. You crouch, charge, uncrouch, blaze through the zombies. And then you wait a significant amount of time for it to recharge. The only reason I even placed it above death perception is because it can actually get you kills, but so can virtually anything else in the game that doesn't waste a perk slot. The modifier makes absolutely zero difference. It just allows you to blaze until stopped. And not to mention, I don't think it's ideal to put yourself in a vulnerable crouching position. Number 22 goes to the OG, double tap. 1.0. It increases your rate of fire. That's it. It does kill the zombies quicker, but also burns through ammo quicker. It's a double-edged sword, and to be honest, the only weapons it has any impact on are full autos with slow fire rates. It's one of the OG4, it's endearing, and you can only get four perks in those OG games, so you may as well. It's good for that reason. 
I guess. Similarly, at number 21, we have Deadshot Daiquiri Dealer. Changing the color and suffix doesn't fool me especially when it has the exact same ability, which is to increase hip fire accuracy, but more notably, guide your sights towards the zombies' heads. It is, like double tap, unnecessary. You can get headshots without dead shot, but it is more ammo efficient and a bit cheaper. Number 20, BO4's Bandolier Bandit. We love alliteration. It's pretty straightforward. You get increased ammo stock for all of your weapons, and in the modifier, your secondary actually replenishes ammo over time when not using, which can be very useful for wonder weapons, but A, you're likely using your wonder weapon as your primary, so the modifier isn't actually all that helpful. And B, you're using your specialist even more. Specialists are king in BO4. That combined with the myriad of other ways to replenish ammo leaves Bandolier Bandit not all that useful. Number 19, BO4's Blood Wolf Bite. I do love this one. I love pooches. So cute. But let's be honest, all of the kills Pooch is getting for you, you can just get yourself. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. It spawns in when you're already on a killing spree and oftentimes kills the last zombie when you don't want it to. It is much better with the modifier. You get occasional ammo drops, which is everything that Bandolier is, plus Luna's assistance, which isn't unappreciated. Number 18, Mule Kick. It allows you to get a third weapon, which in most cases is helpful, especially in the older games, but isn't without consequences. If you die, you lose a major investment. 4,000 upfront for the perk and however much money you spend for your third weapon and its upgrade. So on top of losing what could be a very valuable weapon, you could be losing potentially upwards of tens of thousands of points. Now, if that isn't a mule kick in the nuts, obviously, if you live for eternity, it is a great investment. But we all know that's not the reality. I do think it ultimately has more upside than the previous few perks, if for nothing else, more potential ammo. But let's be honest, you only really need one or two guns to survive. Anything beyond that is a luxury. Luxury. Number 17, BO4's Ethereal Razor. It makes your melee weapon generally better and should, if at all, be used as the modifier because it makes every normal zombie a one knife, one kill for the entire game. It's solid. You got nothing to lose. My only stipulation is there are way better strategies than knifing the entire game. Number 16, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I meant Stronghold. When still, a circle forms around you. If you stay in the circle, over time, you will increase damage output put and armor. And because BO4 is essentially broken with a zombie health cap of round 35, mindlessly camping in the corner with one of several really powerful weapons isn't just viable, but ideal for high rounding. But the reason why it's not much higher on this list is because you have to hold absolutely still Otherwise, it is absolutely useless and a waste of a slot. It's definitely one of the better strategies, but far from the only. Number 15, yet another BO4 perk. Notice a trend here, Victorious Tortoise. When holding the shield out, you are protected through a full 360 degrees. You are quite literally invincible while holding it until it breaks. And as a bonus, when it does, emits an explosion that kills all nearby zombies. It sounds great, in theory. But I do have two issues. One, your shield is going to break much quicker, especially when boss zombies are pummeling you. Not to mention the price of the shield increases over time and you don't have infinite points. And issue number two, when you're holding out your shield, you can't shoot anything other than the shield bullets and you only have a finite amount of those. You can't hold your shield and simultaneously fire your wonder weapon, specialist, etc. So yes, while in the moment it is a great defense perk, you're not able to attack. I would replace this with something better. And if you do get in a pinch, you can still whip out your shield and buy yourself enough time to react. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad. I just think there are better alternatives. Number 14, Electric Cherry or burst. They tried to pull another fast one on me. Electricity is emitted from your weapon when reloading, thus stunning nearby zombies, which outright kills them on early rounds. On later rounds, when it doesn't, will still buy you enough time to get out of a pinch. A similar concept to Victorious Tortoise, but instead of only being on the defense, are on the defense and the offense. Number 13, Cold War's Elemental Pop, the lone Cold War original. At face value, shooting an occasional extra AAT is far from impactful, especially when you can just, gee, I don't know, get the AAT with your weapon. But at its full tier five capacity, among other things, you are getting that very same electric burst effect. Number 12 goes to the PhDs, Flopper and Slider. They are technically different, but are much of the same, negating fall and splash damage. With Flopper, you flop, 
And with slider, you slide. They are must-haves for some strategies, particularly revolving around explosive weapons. In Flopper's case, the Ray Gun, Scavenger, and Mustang and Sally. In Slider's case, the Helion Salvo, which is literally better than some Wonder Weapons. It's gross. But its effectiveness just isn't practical or widespread enough to justify placing it much higher on this list, in my opinion. Because, especially in Flopper's case, all of those explosive weapons are going to crap out before round 40. And then you're left with the infinite damage wonder weapons, traps, etc. Number 11, Buried's Vulture Aid. You get three miscellaneous abilities. One, hallucinating, seeing through walls. Two, small ammo and point drops, which I guess add up over time. And three, the only one that really matters, the green camouflaging mist. When you step inside, the zombies no longer f with you. In the heat of battle, you will get consistent breaks and is crucial for the paralyzer camping strategy. Camp in the corner, tap the trigger, occasionally step in the mist, and you're invincible until round 70 when the paralyzer stops working. You're getting a lot of bang for your buck. It's versatile, exclusive to this map, super effective and fun. Can't go wrong with Vulture Aid. Cracking the top 10, we have what I like to consider BO4's Vulture Aid, Zom Shell. When killing Zs, here and there, an orb will pop up. The orb will slow down all nearby zombies zombies and increase your damage output towards them, which is pretty good in and of itself. Plus in the modifier slot, if you step in the orb, you are disguised. Definitely not the easiest to use, the most practical for noobs, but if you're smart and experienced, you can really get a lot out of Zom Shell. Number nine, BO4's Time Slip. Another perk I would highly recommend using in the modifier slot if possible, as it will increase the recharge rate of your specialist and equipment. And as we discussed earlier, what is king in BO4? Specialists. Those are the real wonder weapons. Those are the real money makers. In a state of perpetual specialist, you will fly through the rounds, plus the base ability of increased mystery box and pack-a-punch speeds doesn't hurt either. Number eight, Quick Revive. It was far and away the hardest to rank for two different reasons. One, two different abilities, solo and co-op. And two, somewhat similarly to a tombstone or who's who, it can be redundant. It wouldn't be the worst idea in the world to replace it with something that would prevent you from dying in the first place. And because of that, I simply couldn't rank it above those better alternatives. And let's be honest, the co-op ability of simply reviving teammates faster isn't something to write home about. But neutralizing the negative is the overwhelmingly positive three insta revives on solo. It is reliable and consistent, unlike the two at the bottom of this list. Number seven, BO4's Dying Wish. It patches up a few of the issues I just talked about. You get a rechargeable extra chance at life, so you don't run out of insta revives, and it works just the same on solo and co-op. There ever was such a thing as a crutch perk in BO4, Dying Wish is undoubtedly it. I would be willing to bet that 90 plus percent of players run it, which actually just goes to show that the BO4 perk system solved nothing. Number six, Speed Gola. Its value certainly diminished over time with the addition of attachments in the weapons kits with the newer games, but is still rock solid, super effective, especially in the older games when you didn't have many other alternatives and it was all the more emphasized. Reloading your gun faster has become underappreciated. In a vacuum, it doesn't seem like a significant difference, but cumulatively, it is and you never know those few extra seconds might just save your life here and there and it's not just reloading everything you do with your hands is faster rebuilding barriers drinking perks other inconspicuous things and if you truly have balls of steel you're gonna buy it over quick revive after all, you only live once. Well, if you buy Quick Revive, you can live more than once, but you have a better chance at living a better once with Speed Cola. Yeah, that made sense. Crack on the top five, we have Stamina, the speed cola of your legs. I've never heard anybody say, I wanna run slower. I don't like running faster. Again, the difference in a vacuum seems minuscule, but I promise you those few extra steps per second could save your life. It literally and figuratively puts you a step ahead of the zombies. Moving is just a lot more graceful and fun. Stamina Up is not only my personal favorite perk, but is a must, especially in those older clubs your games. Number four, the new and improved Double Tap 2.0, which not only retains the original Double Tap's rate of fire increase, but a new damage increase. Every weapon from now on will fire two bullets for every one. 
doubling the damage, which is a no-brainer. You absolutely need to buy this perk. Period. End of story. No discussion. Even when your bullet weapons especially crap out on later rounds, it can still help some wonder weapons. And in BO3, it actually increases your AAT rate, which is crucial because you're primarily using AATs on high rounds. What a glow up. They made one of the worst perks of all time into one of the best with a flick of the wrist. Number three, the best BO4 perk, Winter's Whale. When hit, an ice blast activates. That's a tongue twister, an ice blast activates, thus freezing nearby zombies. If you thought Victorious Tortoise or Electric Cherry was the ultimate defense perk, forget it. You have more than just a split second to figure out a plan and react. Get out of a pinch. You have moments. You get two activations, plus an extra with the modifier and a permeating freeze ring. Don't get me wrong, double tap two is goaded, but Winter's Whale is also goaded for even longer. It never drops off. Just a hair above that at number two, we have Winter's Whale before Winter's Whale, Widow's Wine. The only perk to debut in BO3, a tragedy in and of itself, but it just so happens to be the second best perk of all time, so I'll take it. Like Winter's Whale, when hit, you output a stunning blast effect in this case, sticking them together. I think it's definitively better though because you have four activations and you can throw them in the form of Semtexes at a distance and you get an improved knife. And the replenishment is also better. Instead of a relatively slow recharge, you are perpetually picking up the Widow's Wine drops. It will always be helpful. It is consistently great. And that leaves us with the number one spot. You already knew it. It's not even a surprise, Juggernog. I bet you weren't expecting that. It requires very little explanation. Five hit down better than two hit down. Pen drop. Now, but in all seriousness, it is the ultimate defense perk. And ultimately, your health is more important than anything else in real life, but also in God Zombies. And if you ever question Jug being the absolute goat, ask yourself this. If you were asked to go to round 100 or you die and you only get one perk, what are you picking? It's Jug. Because you know in your heart of hearts, despite how good some of these other perks are, that two, three hit down is too risky. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you would like an updated ranking video on next. Love you. Appreciate you. Peace.